Welcome back to learnpiezo.org and today we're going to be going over an important uh, phenomenon which is very uh, considerable uh, when we are designing piezoelectric transducers and this is a phenomenon called heat generation. And as the term implies, uh, it causes your uh, piezoelectric element and therefore your device to uh, you know increase in temperature because we know that heat increases temperature so why is this bad first of all oh, we'll just talk about that from a sort of practical standpoint the first point of why heat generation is bad is because it changes the material properties you know you designed your uh, ultrasonic transducer to have a certain resonance frequency and if you you know drive your uh, transducer such that it increases temperature or changes temperature it's going to change the elastic properties of the material therefore the um, the resulting resonance frequency is going to shift so for example if I design a ultrasonic you know let's say cleaner to operate at a certain frequency let's call it FR and and we, we designed this resonant system, if you drive it with constant voltage, our ultrasonic power is going to go look like that. You know, this is similar to the displacement curve, which we have. Let's call this ultrasonic power. You know, how much this ultrasonic cleaner, you know, they sort of look like this. Where this is sort of the piezoelectric element right here. And we have like water, you know, where, where, and we're sending out waves. So, and this does, and these pressure waves in the water results in cleaning. So if we drive at the resonance frequency, we're going to get the most, uh, all, you know, vibration power going into the uh, water and therefore get the most cleaning action. However, if we drive it such that uh, heat is generated, this resonance frequency is going to shift lower because the elastic properties of the material, the material is going to get softer. Or we could say the elastic compliance. So basically, this resonance peak will shift due to the resonance frequency depending on you know this general formulation k which is stiffness over m if k decreases then obviously the resonance frequency will decrease and your um and your design will be off the second point and why we don't want uh, pro uh why we don't want heat generation why it's sort of a bad thing is because it will heat up quite frankly and this heating what it can do is, it can, if it, the heating is significant enough, you know, if it gets to like 100 degrees Celsius, you know, your ceramic or your, your transducer, it can depole the material. So it can damage the material. We mentioned that uh, the way to, one way to, uh, uh, how do we explain this now? We mentioned that ferro ferroelectric materials, which are the most common piezoelectric materials, had these things called dipoles. And they're randomly oriented or domains, and then we apply an electric field on it. And the electric field is going to be applied this way, so which will result in all of your domains pointing downward. And what we actually do when we're doing this process called polling, I think we explained it in a lesson, when we're doing this process called polling, we often heat the material. We heat it to, let's say, you know, 100 degrees Celsius. And the reason we heat it is because when we're heating the material, it's more easy for these. It's, it's more easy for these uh, dipoles to, in fact, change their orientation and therefore pull the material. If you apply this field at room temperature, you would need to apply a larger field to pull the material there. But if you introduce heat, you would need a lesser, uh, a lesser uh, electric field. However, now the opposite effect is happening. We already pulled our material. We're using it in its actual application. But due to this heat, we are sort of able to um, disorient these dipoles even under a small electric field, even if we're applying, let's say, 10 volts in our actual application. But if we have a large temperature, if we have this large temperature, we're then, therefore, uh, we... Um, we will, uh, you know, we we can we can actually switch some of these uh, 
do domains and these uh, polarization states such that our material properties will degrade over time and eventually uh, they will degrade significantly. Another reason why we don't like heat generation uh, is because heat is hot. And if you're building a consumer device, uh, you know, heat can either affect the electronics, which are going to be hooked up to the piezoelectric materials in their near vicinity, and heat can also hurt a person. So if you touch, let's say you're, uh, you, let's say you make a, a piezoelectric transformer. You know, we all have in our laptops, we carry on this, carry on this bulky sort of uh, adapter. And if we, instead of using electromagnetic, you know, coils, to make this um, voltage change from the you know the outlet voltage to the voltage you need for the um, you know, for the laptop application, if we use a piezo electric transformer, we have to design it as such that it doesn't get extremely hot because it could be potentially dangerous, maybe a fire hazard, uh, you know. So because and so this is sort of safety reasons, safety and consumer reasons why we would not want uh, to you know, our, our piezoelectric element to heat up. So now let's talk a little bit about heat transfer and let's talk about these two different ideas, heat generation and temperature. So what's the difference between heat generation and temperature? Heat generation is in the units of watts. That is joules per second. And temperature is in the units of Kelvin, or we could say Celsius, degrees Celsius. So you can sort of just tell by the units, there are just two completely different things. Temperature is sort of the measure of the average, average kinetic energy. Um, and heat generation is sort of a a time dependent uh, quantity which relates energy and time. So to discuss these two quantities and relate them we need to talk about something called heat transfer. So in heat transfer uh, there are a couple of ideas which are important. Uh, the first is um, let's, let's just start with conduction. We won't be discussing conduction in depth, but I'll just give an example about uh, heat conduction. So if you have, let's say, a, a temperature source on one side, let's say this is the, this is the outside, so temperature, you know, outside, and then you have the temperature inside, and this is like, this is your wall here. You have a nice sturdy wall, which is, uh, you know, sort of protecting you from the elements here. So the heat, the thermal conductivity, which is called lowercase k, uh, many times, uh, the, it's going to tell you, you know, this is the, this is a hotter temperature, and let's say this is the winter time, so this is going to be the colder temperature. So heat will be transferring from the hot to the cold, and the rate at which heat is transferred from the hot to the cold is related to the thermal conductivity. So basically, we, it's defined as in a steady state formulation. Uh, if we wanted to find the heat flow as Q dot, when the, and this is a Q dot, it has units of joules per second, which is just watts. So the heat flow from the hot side to the cold side, how fast heat is being lost, given the temperature inside, given the temperature outside, is equal to the thermal conductivity times the area. Because obviously, if you have a larger area, more heat is going to be lost. Uh, times the temperature hot, which is going to be the inside temperature, minus the temperature cold, which is going to be the outside temperature, divided by the length. So the length is just this distance here. So if you make this thicker and thicker and thicker, like a thicker jacket, it's going to reduce the amount of heat which is flowing, which makes sense. And if you use something like copper, which has a very high thermal conductivity, a lot of heat will transfer. But if you use something like air, and you know, air trapped, or use some, some, something like 
feathers, you know, like you have in your jackets or some type of cotton, uh, that will actually have a lower thermal conductivity, which will change this uh, heat transfer coefficient or change the heat flow. But this is not the uh, discussion of, of, of today. We're actually going to deal with smaller uh, scale, and in small scale, heat conduction plays a less role. Uh, you know, the ne neglecting of heat conduction, we'll, we'll see what I mean by that later. Neglecting heat conduction will not negatively uh, really affect your estimation of the temperature rise uh, in many ways. So, uh, okay. 